Hello, this is Pastor Blair with Tactical Pulpit. Today we're going to be looking at The Snow Dog by Briggs & Stratton, doing a unsolicited, unpaid review. A few months back I purchased one, and in the process of purchasing that, I tried to find information through YouTube and other sources, and there's very little out there. So I thought I would put this together to help somebody else potentially in that same boat. The Snow Dog is propelled by a 420cc engine, obviously made by Briggs & Stratton. And it, um, what it is, it's a motor tow. So you, it, it pulls you behind it in the sled. Not a new concept. Bolins had these in the 60s in their Husky and their uh, Diablo. So what I'm going to look at is a few different um, uses of this thing. A few things that I've personally used it for and otherwise. Um, over the Christmas season, my brother-in-laws and I, right the day I purchased it, actually, uh, we got together for Christmas, all the sisters did, and we went out ice fishing. It was slightly early ice before anybody else was driving on it, but at a third of a pound per square inch, the weight of this, it does very well in very early season and very late season ice. Not an avid ice fisherman, but it, um, I have used it for that, and hopefully we'll continue to use it uh, for that. Now some of the intended purposes I purchased it for, simple things like checking fence lines. Um, uh, I don't have cattle in, I, I've got a winter, uh, I don't have cattle in this particular pasture, but it's good to maintain that for spring so it's not a whole bunch of work right away in the spring. And <clears throat> this, this winter we've had just a, an abundance of snow. Um, and this, uh, this is a deer trail here in, in virgin snow and it does very well through that. Here we've got a tree, da tree down over the fence line. Another nice thing about this is just the util utilitarianism of it. Um, I haul a chainsaw on it everywhere I go for things like this, grab the saw, extra gas, chainsaw gas. It's got a compartment behind the motor um, that the factory says will hold 90 pounds of equipment. So uh, another use would be camping. You could put a pack there, but I've always got the chainsaw, um, an extra can of premium gas for the machine and some 40 to one for the chainsaw and a little toolbox that I use for my chainsaw. So <clears throat> um, it's, just a, a bunch of different uses. It's not a snowmobile, right? Um, and you're asking yourself, why would I purchase this over, over purchasing a snowmobile? Cost is a big one for me personally, if I'm gonna be honest, cost was a lot of it. So it, it costs less, but it's also, uh, I feel it's more utilitarian friendly than a, uh, a snowmobile. Um, <clears throat> It, it comes with a sled. I guess the sled is purchased separately. I mean, I don't know what good it would do you without the sled. But it's got a metal framer on the sled, a heavy-duty sled. And uh, the majority of the time I'm on this, I'm actually pulling an additional sled be behind the sled I'm riding in. So, um, And in that sled, I've got just a whole bunch of stuff. Okay, here's we had a cedar swamp. Uh, or wind blow down a bunch of trees in a cedar swamp. There's no way to access it. And so I was skidding logs with this. And you see here the, the blunt end of it um, made it very difficult to skid these, these logs. I ended up building a little custom sled for log skidding out of wood and aluminum sheeting. And that just took the, the friction from that blunt end out of the equation. I had a 45 degree angle in the front of that sled. If I had to do it over again, it would be a little steeper than that. Um, the 45 degrees ended up pushing a lot of snow, but better than a blunt end. Um, and here I am. So there's, there's 15 cedar logs that I'm trying to get to my mill. And as soon, I knew as soon as the ground thawed, it would be impossible to get there. Um, <clears throat> the, the sled is by no means uh, perfect. And the snow dog is by no means a skitter, but here I am stuck. Um, and what I realized is it's nev I never get stuck because the motor is underpowered. Um, the conditions, and again, our conditions this winter are far from perfect. Here I am stuck. I'm frustrated. 
can't get it to move. Uh, the track spins fine, it just digs down. Um, so it's not a matter of being underpowered. I'm asking a lot of this machine here. <clears throat> After I recorded this, um, the happy ending to that is I did manage to get these logs skidded up to my mill three quarters of a mile and saw them into lumber. So uh, that was a great use of it. Another use is hunting and trapping, right? This opens up a whole new world of opportunity. Late muzzleloader season in this part of the country where there's usually snow on the ground, now I can get around to just about anywhere. Um, trapping, I can get around to just about anywhere. And <clears throat> that's exciting. O like I said, opens up new realms of, of opportunity uh, that way. So another big one, a big one is for firewood, right? It, it opens the door to getting back to these trees that I know are down. This is a uh, a top of a tree that I uh, skidded out in the fall. This is a spruce top. Now the interesting thing here is there is no trail to this tree. This machine is 20 inches wide and I just zigzagged through trees, through brush, um, at 20 inches wide, come on, uh, nothing holding you back. So <clears throat> that's, uh, that's exciting. Now some stats on towing. The factory, the webpage says 444 pounds. Well, I can tell you, you saw it in this video, I've exceeded that by triple, if not quadruple at times. Um, I've, I've seen some other stats somewhere. The, the number 1,100 pounds rings a bell. And I know I've seen claims of, of 1,600 pounds in, <clears throat> in various um, forums and things like that. Well, I'm here to say... I've, I've even exceeded that, um, I'm sure, that 1,600 pound mark. But um, So very impressed that way. Um, if you follow my videos, um, my <laughs> I've, I've been experiencing shoulder difficulty on, and my shoulder's doing better. I can actually split wood now. But um, <clears throat> I like to haul split wood, but this way I can get it up in rounds to somewhere where I could split it um, way steep snow is not the place to try to wrestle splitting a whole bunch of wood. So uh, throw it in the sled, tow it up somewhere, or split it in the woods if, if that's possible. So yeah, um, use it for, for trail riding. Um, it's uh, a four-stroke, so it's, it's quieter than the two-stroke snowmobiles. You can maybe uh, get in a little closer on some wildlife if you're, if you're trying to see some wildlife goes down the trails fine it goes through virgin snow fine you know a third of a pound um, I want to talk later about the snow conditions but just breezes right along all of this um, now uh, if we look at some of the some of the specs here as I said a 420 cc engine 13 and a half horse and <clears throat> it's a uh, uh, Briggs and Stratton, obviously. Here we've got, um, there's the compartment I was telling you about. I've, and there I've got some camera equipment, but like I said, chainsaw, a little toolbox, usually a couple gas cans. Um, I got some snowshoes that I put, take on and off the sides there. Obviously it makes it a little wider. Up front, there's a, a LED, two-stage LED headlight. Um, you're not going to override this headlight at a top speed of 20 miles an hour. Um, there's there's the track. You can stud that track for icy conditions. Um, a soft canvas cover opens up. You can uh, put your gas in there and a few other zipper compartment, not compartments, but accesses to do some uh, your your maintenance on it. So then this handlebar folds up and down so you can carry it in the back of a pickup. You've got your brake lever there. Um, you've got your... Uh, your switches, your headlight switch, as I said, two-stage dims and highs, your yellow starter switch here. Um, <clears throat> you've got your uh, kill switch in red there. And I've got some hand warmers that cover up that, and it makes it a little confusing. You kind of have to know the controls very well before you use that. The tethered kill switch. When I was skidding logs, my I would push against this, and that would often come disconnected, and it was a little frustrating. I don't use that. Um, when you let off the throttle, there's the throttle. When you let off that throttle, the machine stops right now. So I've, I'm sure it's a, 
uh, they were forced to do that kill switch. A little, sorry about that, a little 12-volt uh, socket. I don't know if there's an optional hand warmer would be my guess. Um, a little difficult to charge your cell phone there, but I guess it could be done. And here's the hitch. It's got a little locking plate there to keep you from coming disconnected and spring-loaded for easy takeoffs and easing up the stops also. That uh, This is the Snowdog brand. Uh, well, here I am folding it up. Fit it right. It actually can sit in the sled in the back of a pickup. One guy can load it. Um, awesome. 300 pounds this machine weighs. So pretty lightweight. Now this sled, this is the Snow Dog sled. It's got a, what I like about it is it's got a metal frame all the way around it with some tie down points. You can put an optional seat in there if you want to sit down. I own one. I don't use it. We'll get to that. But a very well constructed sled. Uh, no complaints about the sled. So um, this is not a snowmobile, right? It's not a mountain sled. You're not going to be able to keep up with those boys. Um, but I do want to say this is me buzzing across um, probably a one inch pretty soft crust, 18 inches of powder snow, and then beneath that is some heavier snow just gliding right over the top. I don't, there's no speedometer, but the max speed is 20, and I'm probably going, if that's the case, 17 miles an hour here, you know, so um, sinking down an inch and a half. Um, very light footprint, and it, it, it goes. Uh, it goes well through this season's terrible snow conditions. You know, we had that heavy snow that was uh, down first and then that 18 inches on top of it of powder snow. And, and I've been riding this weekly probably all winter long. So um, overall, I'm pretty impressed with this, uh, with this machine. You can, this is the, I should have said this in the beginning, the B13ME. Um, it's the standard size without reverse. I would probably have added reverse if I had it to do over again, especially with the uh, uh, skidding that I do with it. So um, single person loading, like I said, I, I lean the sled up against the tailgate and then I uh, uh, drive the snow dog into the sled. I pick up the back of the sled, slide it in. Um, I, I don't have any footage of that. Um, so here's the uh, factory MSRP is three thousand three hundred and sixty nine bucks. I bought mine on sale. I won't say for how much, but can, uh, for less than that, uh, for the price of the compact version, actually, if you want to know, I got the hand warmers. I got the seat. Um, this is another advantage to this. I've not tried this. So I'm not going to address this much. I just want to mention it is the year round use. You can use this thing year round, unlike a snowmobile. I suppose you could, but um, <clears throat> um, I'm not going to get into that. Like I said, I, I bought it with snow on the ground. I've not used it without snow, but that's what the factory states. The sales the salesman stated that year-round use, and they sell carts instead of the sled. Um, a little pricey, but something could be built. I am going to try it for sure. So, yeah, like I said, overall, I'm impressed. We've had bad snow conditions this year. Nothing has slowed this down. Um when I hook up to a log that's too big, the engine isn't underpowered. The uh, CVT transmission, the continuously variable transmission, is not underpowered. It's traction. Um, and I got those logs out after that trail had refroze and it breezed across there quickly. Any other further questions or comments, um, uh, ask me in the comment section. Thank you.